What's going on guys? It's your boy Cody from Off The Schneid. Today we're doing some ADP either ors type of a thing. Um, who would you rather have and, and why type of a thing. I'm using uh, Underdog Fantasy's Best Ball ADP. I'm using them because they are you know real money drafts. Obviously there's a tiny bit of a difference between a best ball and a redraft. Not an extreme amount, um, but obviously there's a little bit of a difference there. But realistically, I just think that it's the most accurate ADP out there if it's a real money league type of thing, right? If, if people are just doing mock drafts things get crazy things get kind of thrown out of whack a little bit this is real money numbers so i'm choosing to use fan underdog fantasies uh adp which you can find on on uh, underdog fantasy check the description for a link there um so hot and heavy i uh, i said this i said this in a comment and kind of got smirked at about uh about this comparison um, Mike Isecki over Dallas Goddard. Um, underdog Fantasy ADP 127.4 overall. 10th round in a 12 team league for Mike Isecki. Or three full rounds later, you can go ahead and get Dallas Goddard 90.3 overall. 7th round in a 12 teamer. Um, to me, this isn't even close, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, let's just look at, obviously the stats are on the screen. You can see they're pretty close. Touch, touchdowns go to Mike Kosecki. Um, yards go to Mike Kosecki a tiny bit. Obviously, there's some some missed time in there for, for Goddard type of a thing, um, especially in 2020 last year where, you know, um, targets and receptions were down type of thing but let's let's break this down a little bit um obviously most of the the stat lines are going to speak for themselves here um so um if we look at quarterback play let's start there let's start a, let's start a quarterback play so Tua Tagovailoa in uh, Miami obviously Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia Who's the better quarterback here? Um, I'm not ready to say that that Tua is. I'm not over here saying that Tua Tagovailoa is better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. I'm not saying that. But Alabama and Nick Saban clearly thought he was. Um, so there's that. Uh, continuity on offense. It's the same coaching regime, basically the same offense, except for obviously Jalen Waddles there, same quarterback, all that kind of stuff in in Miami. Um, Obviously, there's 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 a little bit of that for for Goddard with the continuity. Jalen Hurts played less games than Tua, so there's more familiarity with uh, Tua and Gasecki than there is for Hurts and Goddard. Um, Nick Sirianni comes in, you know, I'm not, he, he's not like, you know, too tight end type of guy like uh, they have going on in in, uh, in New or or New England, sorry, geez, New England Patriots with uh, Johnny Smith and uh, Hunter Henry. But, you know, and, and everybody's been saying for the long, like, here's the thing with Dallas Goddard. Everybody's saying this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. You know, at some point that kind of has to dry up. I'm not saying that, that Dallas Goddard's not a good tight end and he's not a viable tight end one at all. That's not what I'm saying. And, and I don't want people to put words in my mouth with all of these. Do not put words in my mouth. I'm not saying that Gasecki is better than Dallas Goddard. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, at, in the 10th round over the 7th, give me Mike Kosecki every single day of the week, especially on Sundays. So that's what I'm saying. I don't want to miss words here or get everybody confused or anything like that. So if you look at it that way, you know, again, new coaching staff, new offense, not only for Goddard, but also for Jalen Hurts. Um, I, I like like I said, give me Mike Kosecki every single day of the week. Let me know what you think in the comments there. Let's move on. We're going to do uh, two wide receivers, a running back, and a quarterback as well. So let's get to it. Probably get some heat from this one, but I don't I don't particularly care. It just makes sense to me. Um, so Gabe Davis over Tyler Boyd. Again, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not saying that Gabe Davis is a better wide receiver than Tyler Boyd. I am not saying that. What I'm saying is... 10th round in a 12 teamer you can get gabe davis or in the sixth round a full 50 picks earlier you can get tyler boyd um i just did an episode with um you know some bold takes i have it's i think it's very very possible very possible go watch the episode if you want to see what i have to say there it's very possible that gabe davis is a thousand yard receiver and a 10 plus touchdown uh receiver in the nfl this year i think that that's possible is that possible for tyler boyd no no it's not i think that you know his last year numbers are pretty much where he's gonna be at 
That's that, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Tyler Boyd. Again, do not put words in my mouth here. Um, if he replicates that exact stat line, that's very, very, very quality. That's your tight, you know, wide receiver three, basically in a 12 team or 10 team or for sure, you know, for sure. Um, but in a deeper league, that might be your wide receiver two type of thing. I just think that the potential for Gabe Davis is much, much higher. Um, Ch- Jamar Chase comes in, takes reps away from, I believe, Tyler Boyd. I think T. Higgins and uh, Jamar Chase are going to be the, two, the the guys type of thing. But I do think there's room for Tyler Boyd to continue that style line where he was at there. I definitely think that that is entirely possible. Um with Gabe Davis, um, obviously he has an improving quarterback, uh, continuity on the offensive line. Josh Allen is fantastic. He's a top five uh, quarterback in the game right now. With all the issues, all the things that are coming up with Cole Beasley, he very well could not be on this team. Um, should Stefan Diggs miss any time? I don't think he does, but if he should, I believe that Gabe Davis becomes that, you know, that number one guy type of thing. Um, so yeah, at, it, it, if four rounds earlier, absolutely or sorry four rounds later excuse me give me gabe davis as my wide receiver three so there you go let me know what you think in the comments we got one more wide receiver comparison so let's check it out i i might take some heat for this one i'm not really sure i don't think i should i absolutely don't think i should but we'll see um i got marquise brown hollywood brown over robbie anderson every single day uh underdog fantasy 88th overall seventh round in a 12 teamer or 61st overall in fifth round in a 12 teamer type thing um realistically i think that you know they were shopping robbie anderson in the off season they were trying to get rid of him in carolina didn't happen didn't materialize he's still in carolina obviously the first ever offensive draft pick for the carolina panthers was a guy that they're very familiar with from lsu terrace marshall um i did another episode like i just mentioned go check that one out i talk about him as well um and then hollywood brown this used to be a huge narrative in the nfl third year wide receivers it used to be a huge thing it's not quite anymore you expect more from a you know younger age and expect them to produce earlier type of thing but you know that narrative doesn't completely go out the window he's still very young he can still run he can still have those big splash plays absolutely he might be a little boomer bust which is perfect for for best ball if you ask me um in his last two seasons, and sorry, in his first two seasons, he has 15 total touchdowns. Robbie Anderson has eight total. Um, you know, yards are a little bit different there, but I expect, uh, you know, an, uh, an increase, you know, an uptick in production from Hollywood Brown and a bit of a, a downtick sort of a thing for Robbie Anderson. So this one's a no-brainer to me, makes tons of sense. Again, we're talking about probably your wide receiver three, uh, unless it's again like a 16 team league. And even then it still might be somewhere around there anyways. Um, Either way, like every day of the week, give me Marquise Brown in the seventh over Robbie Anderson in the fifth. So there you go. That one's relatively short and sweet. I, I think it's pretty basic. I honestly think it's pretty pretty obvious if you ask me. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let's check out the, the running back comparison that I got for you guys. Probably take a little bit of heat on this one. I've been... Uh on the Chase Edmonds train over here. Um, doesn't seem like many people are. Uh, sixth round in uh, Underdog Fantasy, 78th overall, 44th overall, third round pick for Miles Sanders. Personally, I was a big time fader of Miles Sanders last year. I 100% completely faded Miles Sanders, worked out for me, and I'm pretty much on that same you know wavelength this year. Um, I just think that it's it's you know again with the coaching turnover i said some stuff with uh on, under uh for dallas goddard there similar stuff and they're bringing in running backs like they're going out of style that's got to be for some reason it's not just you know for nothing you know for fun for for camp bodies that kind of a thing like it's just not the narrative so um and then drafting kenny gainwell who is you know arguably the best or if not one of for sure the best pass catching backs in the draft this year um and that's what i've been saying about this philadelphia eagles backfield to anyone that'll basically listen is you know the only way to attack it in my opinion with these adps is to grab kenny gainwell super super late which i have been doing again check the my twitter and uh there's a post on there where i posted my exposure and uh kenny gainwell i think is my second highest after Terrace Marshall. So 
Then there's Chase Edmonds. They bring in uh, James Conner on a one-year deal for not that much money, 1.75, I think, uh, million. And it's only a matter of time. He's going to get hurt. James Conner is just, he's going to get hurt. It's just what it is. It's its happened every single year that he's been in the league. It's just going to happen. And, you know, Chase Edmonds is finally going to get his shot. He's over here saying that he's ready to run through a brick wall. If a running back says that he's ready to run through a brick wall for this team and, you know, to play and stuff like that, I believe him. So there you go. I believe the kid. And, you know, with his uh, receiving stats, for me, it's it's a no-brainer. I'm taking Chase Edmonds three full rounds later than Miles Sanders and getting similar production, in my opinion, at least with total yards and probably touchdowns, in my opinion. He might might lose a little bit of, you know, touchdowns, maybe early on to James Conner before he gets hurt. Kyler Murray obviously runs a bunch in, but... Realistically, you know, Miles Sanders, six total touchdowns both seasons, five both seasons for, for Chase Edmonds here. I, I, I don't think it's close personally. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let's check out the quarterback comparison I have for you. All right, last one. Final comparison here is quarterbacks. I got uh, Ryan Tannehill over Russell Wilson. Obviously, you see it there. Three full rounds and you can get Ryan Tannehill over Russell Wilson. I am a massive, massive fan, believer, supporter of Russell Wilson. But in this instance, it just doesn't make sense to reach for for Wilson, you know, uh, 34, 34 picks earlier than a Ryan Tannehill, especially. So, sorry, let's look at the total t- touchdowns here. 33 passing, 7 rushing for Tannehill, 40 total touchdowns. Russell Wilson had 40 passing and two rushing, so a difference of two touchdowns. However, if you're in a league like best ball, you know, that uh, is only four points for t- passing touchdown, full six for the rushing, realistically, Ryan Tannehill is head and shoulders better than Russell Wilson as far as fantasy points are concerned. Um, again, don't put words in my mouth. I am not saying that Tannehill is a better quarterback than Russell Wilson because he's absolutely not. In my opinion, not. No, he's not. But in fantasy, again, especially in best ball or in redrafts, anything realistically, Ryan Tannehill is certainly right there and deserves to have a higher ADP than he's at and a lot closer to a guy like Russell Wilson, especially if you look at this comparison. Um, Obviously, you got Julio Jones. So give me Julio Jones and A.J. Brown over DK and Tyler Lockett. It's very, 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 very close. But, and then the supporting cast in Tennessee is better than in, uh, in uh, Seattle for me. And it's not particularly close. Um, so there you go. There's, there's, you know, the proof is in the pudding here. Tannehill is absolutely a guy. I think people are still kind of sleeping on him. I have absolutely completely stopped. I was lower on him than I am now. And for me, every single day of the week, especially on Sundays, give me Ryan Tannehill over Russell Wilson. So there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments about those comparisons there. Let me know if you want me to do it again or who you think I should look at, that sort of a thing. Uh, Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Check the description for Underdog Fan. Tennessee, it's a great place to go and do uh, best ball drafts, you know, get, get your feet wet at a reasonable price. You know, there's $3 leagues, $5 leagues, that kind of a thing, 10 teams, 6 teams, 12 teams, all that kind of stuff. So check out the description for the link for Underdog Fantasy, uh, and we'll see you on the next video.